Hello everyone, so here we go. We are steaming into our third lesson on castles. Um, this is one that I think you're really going to enjoy. I've had to edit it slightly, which has made me really sad because it was supposed to be a really fun sort of task that you do with a partner, um, which is a real shame, but hopefully uh, you'll still enjoy it anyway. So as normal, title down please, Mott and Bailey castles. Lesson objective for today, to identify the advantages and disadvantages of Mott and Bailey castles. So press pause, get that written down, press, press play when you're ready. I want you to just have a little bit of a look at this map, guys. So you can see on there, it's asking you two questions. So it is asking you, what do you think is being shown on the map? All right, it's fairly obvious. OK, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you guys have worked out from what the symbols look like. OK, um, that what is being shown on the map and then you balance that with what it is that we're studying. OK, you could make a guess that these are castles. So these are all castles that William built during his time as king. All right. So lots and lots of castles. He did a lot of building. What I want to draw your attention to is if you just follow my pen here, you can see this red circle here. So we've got Dover Castle there. We know where Dover Castle is. We looked at that in a previous lesson. It's right on the cliffs. OK. Um, and then here we have got Pevensey. Now, Pevensey is the place where William landed when he came for the Battle of Hastings. All right. So Hastings is very nearby there. So we've got Pevensey there. Now, the second question is it asks, what information about England can you get from the map? So one of the reasons that we spoke about for William building castles was the idea that he might need to keep an eye on people. OK, um, so he built castles in areas where he thought that there might be rebellions. And if you have a look, so you're looking for areas on the map where there is quite a concentration, which means quite a few castles all quite close together. So if you have a look here, you can see there's quite a concentration of castles. Now, this area of England here is Wales. So he built a lot of castles along the border of Wales. OK, and the reason that he did that is because he was having trouble with the Welsh rebels. They were causing a bit of trouble. So he built cast castles in this area to keep an eye on them. And he would also then be able to keep an eye on anyone crossing from Wales into England. And when I say him, we don't mean him, him, I mean his soldiers. OK, so he um, he would keep an eye on them. And then there's just one more important castle that I'd like to point out. And that is this one right here in the middle. OK, and it is the Tower of London. So it is the main castle that we have in London. And William was responsible for building that, which is uh, quite a good fact for you guys to try and remember. So when we think about our key reasons as to why um, William actually built castles, we can break it down into four different. OK, so you have got the first section is safety and protection. So, as I said, he built castles to keep an eye on places to make sure um, that they weren't going to rebel. But also he built it for protection for his men and protection for the people that live there. OK, so it was a sort of double edge. So if anyone was going to invade England, the castle would also be helpful to protect people that live around or nearby the castle. Uh, and then moving over to the right hand side, we have got making money. OK, so the castles helped him make money. The castle was filled with soldiers or knights and they would be responsible for collecting the taxes in the local area. So um, it was a good way for him to make money building a castle because he knew that his taxes would be paid. And then we go down to the bottom, you've got respect. So uh, he would get a lot of respect from all of the castles that, that he would build. It, it was a good way to show his power. And we spoke about that in a previous lesson, that that was a reason why people built castles. And that was one of the reasons why William built so many castles. And then the bottom one there, we've got as a base for his soldiers. So he was able to have soldiers there. And if he needed them to put down a rebellion, uh, in the local area, they were close by and they could get ready really quickly. So he spread his soldiers out um, across all of the castles and, and, and that was a good way for him to England and also keep a bit of control over England as well. And so what I want you to do, guys, is just to copy these four reasons out for me. You can give it a mini title, the one that's in the middle there. Why did William build castles in England? And then you can just list those four things. If you want to draw a little picture to go with them, that's absolutely fine. Uh, it's totally up to you. So pause the video now, get that drawn, and then I'll see you on the next slide. So this is where we're going to get into the main part of our lesson. So 
I want you guys to imagine you've gone back, you've got in a time machine, okay, and you are a Saxon, okay, which is the name we give to the English people that lived there in that time. So you are a Saxon and you hate William of Normandy. We know he wasn't very popular, so that's no surprise that you hate him. And you want to drive him and his Norman soldiers out of England and you want to replace him with an English king. So you guys want to rebel. Now, the guy there with the arrow pointing to him, that is Aldwin, and he is the chief of your people, of your tribe, okay? So your chief has decided to start a rebellion against William and the Norman, Normans, Normans, Normans. Uh, he plans to launch an attack on the Motton Bailey Castle that William has built nearby, but he needs your help. So, so your first task, guys, is you need to spy on the Normans for Aldwin. Okay, he wants to know what one of William's new Mott and Bailey castles looked like. So it is your job. You need to imagine that you have been, you've got close to the castle, close enough that you can draw a really good diagram of it. Okay, but uh, you've spied, so you need to make sure that you weren't caught. So on the next slide is a diagram that you're going to copy out and you're going to label it fully. And that is what you're going to give to Aldwin. Now, before you press pause and do that, I just want to say one more thing, which is the picture on the right there is from Miss West's favourite film of all time. You guys might know it, which if you do, fantastic. Send me a comment on Show My Homework and tell me that you know the film. If not, ask your parents. If they can tell me the film or you can tell me the film, I will give you an achievement point. So send me your guesses in the comments. You can only have one guess. We need to make it fair. OK, but it is Miss West's absolute favourite film. So if you haven't seen it, I will tell you what it is in our next lesson and you can go and try and watch it during lockdown if you get a chance. So pause the video here. Uh, sorry, no, don't pause the video here. Go on to the next slide. Pause the video there so you can draw your um, Mott and Bailey diagram for Chief Aldwin. So as I said, guys, you just need to pause your video here and make sure you do me a beautiful drawing of a Mott and Bailey castle. You give it a title, Mott and Bailey castle, and you fully label it. So pause here and get your drawing done. So your next uh, task is you need to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of this castle. OK, um, Aldwin basically wants you to do all of the work here. He's just going to sit back. but He's going to be the one that's hopefully going to take the castle in the end. So to plan his attack, he wants you to identify the strengths and weaknesses of this castle. So on the next slide, there's going to be some boxes. Read the boxes and then you need to put them under one of the two headings there. OK, um, and tell me if it is a strength of that castle or a weakness of that castle. So you can see here you've got six different things uh, to read through. Uh, so you just need to create a simple table on your piece of paper for advantages and disadvantages and write them in. So if you pause here, guys, and then press play when you are ready and we will talk about where they need to go. OK, so you should have had time to do that now. So let's start with the first one. So wood can be knocked down easily. I'm very much hoping that you have put that in an advantage okay because you are thinking of you are the attacker so what are the advantages for you so the fact that you could knock down this castle easily because it's made of wood is a big advantage to you the second one a mot okay is hard for attackers to climb so the mot is hard for attackers to climb i always think that's going to be a disadvantage to you guys because you're going to need to work out a way to get over that mot because they are tricky to get up get up and over so that's a disadvantage the third one you've got wood rots in the wet weather so wood rots in the wet weather that is an advantage for you guys because actually over time the castle would not fare very well especially over winter when you're getting a lot of rain potentially snow it was also a lot colder back then okay so the wood couldn't really handle the extreme types of weather so it would rot which would make it weaker therefore easier for you and Aldwin and the rest of your rebels to attack. So that should be an advantage for you. And then we've got the water in a moat was hard to cross. So that's definitely a disadvantage. You, if you guys want to take over weapons and things, you've got to take them over water. This moat is that, that area of water that goes around the edge of the castle just to make it extra hard for people to attack like you guys. So that's going to be a disadvantage for you. 
Uh, the fifth one, we've got defenders could shoot arrows down at attackers. Imagine you are attacking this castle. Would it be an advantage to be shot by an arrow or a disadvantage? Super easy one. Definitely a disadvantage for you. OK, they are going to be above you. So you are easy prey for them if they've got uh, archers with their arrows. And then the bottom one you have got that wood can catch fire. So that is a big advantage to you because that gives you a really good idea of what you could do if you wanted to. Okay, so we know that wood catches fire very easily. So just make sure that you've got those in the right columns. You should have done most of them uh, right anyway, because you guys are super smart. And I will see you on the next slide. So you've given Alban your plan of your castle. You've come up with the strengths and weaknesses for him. Now you need to get into the real nitty gritty of planning your attack. So he's almost ready to launch his attack. OK, so you're going to use what you've learned about Mott and Bailey Castle so far. To complete the questions on the next slide to plan your attack now normally if we'd been in school guys this would have been a sheet that i would have given would have given out to you i will attach a sheet if you have a printer by all means print it if you don't have a printer guys you just need to write this out under the different headings so if we go straight to the next slide so you can see here your sheet as i said i will attach this so if you do have access to a printer print it out and you can fill it out on the sheet if not guys you just need to write it out write it out on paper however you want to do it it's completely up to you you can even draw in the pictures in the middle if you really want to, but you absolutely don't have to as long as you are ask, answering the five questions so you're going to talk to me about the strength of strengths of a mountain bailey castle specifically the weaknesses of the castle and then what your plan is to attack it. So you're going to talk to me about the best way to attack the castle, how that would take advantage of one of the Mott and Bailey's weaknesses, and why your plan would be successful. OK, so you just need to be getting on with that. And what you need to do when you have finished that is, I know I've said not to submit any work to me, and you don't need to submit any other work from this lesson, but I would really like it if when you've done your sheet, or you've written it out, you take a picture of it and you can submit the picture to me on show my homework. OK, um, don't worry if you can't do that, but if you can do it, that would be great. So this is our final plenary for our castle lesson. Um, I'm sure your plans of attack would all be uh, really, really good. And I would hope that your attack would be successful. So, but what I want you to think about for your plenary is how would you improve a Mott and Bailey castle? OK, so think about the disadvantages that we talked about. If you need to pause here, you can pause and you can have another look at those disadvantages. But you should all be pretty clear on what they are now. So think about those disadvantages. So what are the things that aren't great about Mott and Bailey castles? And think about what would you change about the castle to make it stronger? So I'd like you to draw out the diagram again that you did earlier. So you're just going to draw that out again. But add in pictures, diagrams or notes of what changes you would make. OK, so, for example, you might say that you would make the moat even deeper. That might be one of the things that you would like to change about it, to make it even trickier. You might say you put sharks in there. But it needs to be reasonable things. OK, so what changes would you make to the Mott and Bailey Castle? So draw the diagram out again from earlier, but add in what you would change. All right. And I will speak to you next time when we are doing our fourth lesson in castles.